and in parts. He starts the local exhaust in the engine room and work can begin. When working with oil and cleaning in the engine room, you must always remember to wear eye protection. As shown earlier with the washing machine, you can clean things with a variety of cleaning substances. Always make sure you use the least harmful chemical that can do the job. Many of the lubrication and cooling products in the engine room are highly developed not to damage the engine parts, but will ensure that the engine performs at full capacity. In this example, more oil has to be poured into an auxiliary engine. Here the AB carefully puts on his gloves and safety glasses before starting work. There are many other places in the engine room where you will have contact with chemicals. The last thing we need to look at is the paintwork. In this case, the paint is collected from the paint locker on the deck. As the paint only needs to be used inside the engine, water-based paint will often be sufficient. You can check this in the product selection table. In this case, he selects an oil-based paint because it is the deck in the engine room that needs painting. On the paint tin, you can see the two code numbers indicating the safety precautions that are needed. Back in the engine room, he has put on a face shield and gloves before opening the paint tin. The paint is prepared and stirred under the local exhaust. This paint requires ventilation with a breathing mask unless the area that needs painting is only small, as in this case. There are a few rules that you need to remember. First, always use the least harmful chemical for the job. Second, remember that you can find information in the workplace instruction about the health hazards of the oil or chemical you are using and about how to work safely with it on board. Third, in order to avoid exposure to oils and chemicals, a variety of techniques are available. For instance, you could use a closed system such as a washing machine or automatic dosing or a local exhaust or a less harmful working method. The fourth thing to remember is to make sure you use the necessary personal protective equipment to protect yourself against short-term effects such as getting chemicals in your eyes, and long-term effects such as skin cancer. Finally, good hygiene is important when handling chemicals. Remember to wash your hands, both before and after going to the toilet, as the skin on your private parts is very sensitive. In the accommodation on board, there's always a lot going on. Food has to be cooked, things have to be repaired, and cleaning needs to be done. Here the cleaning assistant is heading to the next cabin to clean it and change the bed linen. There are many more cabins to get ready for the next guests. When cleaning mirrors and shiny surfaces, avoid spraying chemicals out into the air, because if you do this, you will inhale the little droplets in the air, which is harmful. Instead, use a cloth with detergent, which has been wrung out first. This is just as good as using a spray bottle. Then wipe the mirrors with paper or a dishcloth.
Even though the work needs to be done quickly, you must remember to take good care of yourself. If you use the chemicals incorrectly or forget to protect yourself, the result may be that you won't be able to work at all. One out of every five people who works with detergents gets some form of skin allergy or eczema. For special cleaning jobs, such as cleaning an oven, disinfection, or polishing a great deal of brass, you must wear gloves with a breathing mask to avoid inhaling the harmful fumes. Read more about this in the workplace instruction. Here, another crew member is getting chemicals for dishwashing. He finds the product's workplace instruction and notes, and he needs to use safety glasses and gloves. Detergents and water will remove the protective layer of fat from your skin, and sooner or later, your skin will be damaged unless you wear gloves. Always wear cotton gloves under your gloves to reduce the problem of sweaty hands. Yet another crew member is about to start cleaning and is getting the trolley ready to clean the cabins. She needs to look up all the substances that she is going to use, making sure that she has all the necessary protective equipment ready on her trolley. Here, the assistant has reached the cabin and is about to start cleaning. You need to follow these tips to avoid injuries. Choose the mildest detergent and one that is as neutral as possible. The bottle shows the pH value of the detergent. 7 is neutral and your skin has a pH value of 5. So the further you get from this neutral range, the more irritation or etching you will experience. Another important thing to remember is to be very careful to stick to the dosage indicated on the bottle. If you use too much detergent, this may damage whatever you are cleaning, and it may harm you as well. Only use stronger substances when they are actually necessary. In this case, toilet cleaner is being used, which is dangerous. Many detergents contain color and perfume. You should avoid these Tell your supervisor to buy products that do not contain colour and perfume. They work just as well and you avoid allergic reactions. Everywhere on board there are cleaning jobs to be done and many different chemicals are used to remove dirt and grease. One of the most important rules to remember is never to mix the chemicals that you use. In some places, such as the galley, you need to disinfect after cleaning. Disinfectants are more harmful than ordinary detergents and if the substance is mixed with other detergents, toxic fumes may develop. So never mix the chemicals that you use. We are back with our friend from earlier, who not only works faster using the dishwasher, but also avoids contact with the strong soap needed for the job. Always take great care when topping up dishwasher detergent and rinse aid. Wear gloves and safety glasses. Let's just recap on what you need to do to protect your own health and the health of your colleagues. First, 
always use the least harmful product for the job. Avoid using organic solvents, perfume and colour. Whenever possible, use detergents that do not have a hazard label. If you buy detergents in Scandinavia, choose products that carry the SWAN Eco label. Second, remember that you can find information in the workplace instruction about the health hazards of detergents and about how you can work safely with them on board your ship. Third, you can reduce the risk of exposure to detergents by using good techniques. For instance, closed systems such as a dishwasher or automatic dosage systems and good ventilation. Only use spray in high pressure if this is absolutely necessary. Use working methods which let you avoid wet work and direct contact with chemicals and water. Fourth, use the necessary personal protective equipment to protect yourself against short-term effects such as getting chemicals in your eyes and long-term effects such as eczema. Finally, good hygiene is important when handling detergents and chemicals. Remember to wash your hands both before and after going to the toilet as the skin on your private parts is very sensitive. Your safety is important to help the ship to sail. But it is also important that you take good care of yourself so that you keep doing your job and return home safely to your family once again. We hope that you find the advice in this film useful. Thank you for watching. Enjoy your work. Thank you.